is different. When you have a victorious mindset, you come from a different place. So we're coming from a place of victory, amen? So when the Bible says, by his stripes, we are already healed. So we're not coming from a place of healing. We're coming, I mean, from a sickness. We're coming from a place of healing. We're already healed. We just need to walk into it, amen? Come in and get a strategy. I gotta come in and get. 
get a strategy. But you know what happened? A lot of Christians don't want to put on the shoes of peace. They want to put on the flip-flops of the world. Go ahead. Go ahead now and do a demonstration. Let us know. of the world. Why do we wear flip-flops? Because we can easily slide in them and we can Ooh, easily slide out. Oh. That's good. So instead of having on the shoes I got on the flip-flops because I'm going to go to church today and I'm going to go sleep with somebody who is there tomorrow. I got on my flip-flops. I'm going to go to church today and I'm going to go steal something tomorrow. I got on my flip-flops. I'm going to go to church today and I'm going to be lying tomorrow because I got on my And be up in the bar chopping it up. Why? Because I got on my flip flops. It's easy to get on these flip flops. They flip flops because you flip flopping. That's why they flip flops. You flip flop. You want to be saved when it's convenient for you. And you want to go play with the world when it's not convenient for you. You got on your flip flops. Because I can slide in and I can slide out of them very quickly. But I want to be healed. But I want to be whole. But I want to be set free. But I got on my flip flops. You better say that. Then they need even my flip flops. You don't want to have on your flip-flops. Quit flip-flops. That's good. And get committed. Make it right. Amen. Say that for Christ I live and for Christ I die. Okay? You want to be serious about your walk with Christ. Quit putting on your flip-flops. Quit flipping and flopping when it's convenient for you. You're talking out of this town. You're cussing. On the other hand, you're praising the Lord. You Quit being flip-flopping. It's time for you to make a decision for Christ. It's time for you to live for Christ. People are watching you. And you giving Christianity a bad name. You making Christianity out of a black eye. Because I can't trust what I see when I'm watching you. Can I trust what I see? When Sonia was preaching today, I said, I might as well just get up and teach a little bit. Because she showed preached a sermon. Amen. Amen. So you can't be flip-flopping when it comes to the things of God. Because the enemy is all proud. He's seeking who has made devour. He want to steal, kill, and destroy everything that you're trying to do. He's trying to kill your dreams. He's trying to destroy your plans. He's trying to kill your kids. Hallelujah. He ain't nothing to play with. Just ain't no game. This real. This real. Salvation is real. Let me get back to my sermon. Hallelujah. Uh, you, you in there. Hallelujah. You are in there. 2 Timothy 2 and 15, it says, Be diligent to present yourself approved by God. A workman does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When they talk about being approved, that means that you remain after the testing. Wow. Because there will be a test. You will be tested for authenticity. So you can't just have lip service and don't have the walk to back it up. You will be tested for authenticity. I'm evangelist so-and-so, you're going to be tested. I'm pastor such-and-such, you're going to be tested. Our brother Bubblegum is coming forward. Sister Bad Breath is coming for you. You will be you will be tested. Let's go to Romans 10 and 14. Romans 10 and 14. You will be tested. You will be tested for authenticity because somebody is living off of their grandmama's praise. Somebody is living off of their granddaddy's worship. It ain't real to you. So until you get to that place, yeah, I pray to my God for you. But then there has to come a point in time in your life. When your relationship with God is personal, 
It's your relationship. You got to be able to go to God for yourself. But until you get there, me and Apostle, we'll pray for you. But there has to come a point in time where this relationship has to be real to you. It will be tested for authenticity. Is it authentic? Is it really yours? So when people say, oh, don't share your dreams, don't share your vision. If God is having you a vision and it's your vision, they can't do nothing with it anyway. You can give them the business plan and they can't make it work. Because it ain't their vision. It ain't their dream. God didn't place it inside of them. This look good. This sound good. I'm going to take it and I'm going to do it. It ain't going to work. Because it ain't yours. It ain't yours. So your vision will be tested for authenticity. Your Christianity will be tested for authenticity. Soon as you think you arrive, here comes something else. That's the truth. I'm, I'm studying peace, studying peace. Got peace in my heart, joy in my heart. The other day I was on my way to work and I put my own stuff in the car and I had all my, I had my work bag, my this bag, because I had some meetings and I put everything in the car. Came in the house, finished getting dressed, went out to the car. My car locked on its own. Apostle gone to the gym, keys locked in the car. I work all the way on the east side of the world. I'm like, I am not paying Uber $50 to take me to work. So I called, got everything taken care of. The um, AAA came, opened up the car. She was like, this is the second key and sportage that I had to do. It must be something with it. I'm like, he was trying to disturb my peace. Trying to disturb my peace. So then when Apostle got out of the gym, he called me. We talking about it. You know you just want to share. He trying to tell me all the stuff I should have done. I'm going to go home. Keep my peace. I'm going to keep my peace. I'm going to keep my peace. I'm going to keep my peace. He called me back. What you doing hanging up on me? Because I'm going to try to hear what you were saying. I'm going to keep my peace. I'm going to keep my peace. I'm going to keep my peace. He was like, I don't believe you hung up on me. Because I was going to cut. Baby told her, and I think I'm gonna stay home. Yeah. My baby told her. 
<laughs> there was my big toe, I might understand. <laughs> but it was just your baby toe. Well, baby toe. Okay, I got a headache, y'all might have to stay home. My back may be hurting a little bit. It, may, it, it might hurt. Might, uh, might, uh, so might. So I'm gonna stay home. But if everybody's not soldiers for Jesus. So if you're not a soldier, believe me, you will be a casualty of war. Wow. All right. In Romans it says, and how shall they pe preach unless they are sent? And as it, is, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who brings good tidings. So back in the Roman army time, they didn't have sail bounds. <laughs> they used to have a messenger that would go tell the people what was going on in the war. So they said when the messenger was coming, the feet sounded beautiful. And they were bringing good tidings to tell them about what was going on in the war. So when the war was going on and the messenger came, they was like, how beautiful are the feet that brings the peace of God. So we as Christians, to put on our shoes of peace, we need to be bringing good news. Good news. What's good news to the world? Good news to the world is that salvation is made available to them. They don't have to die and go to hell. They can die and go to heaven. Good news is I don't have to be poor no more. Good news is I don't have to be sick no more. Good news is I don't have to be mentally challenged anymore. All of that is good news. And all of that is available to them with a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? So the shoes of the peace of the gospel. The Bible says that we need the gospel of peace. Jesus made peace by his blood that was shed on the cross for us. Many people, men and women, are searching for peace within. Right. They're searching for yeah. peace within. There's no way that you're going to have yeah. peace within yeah. unless you have peace with God. Right. That's the truth. Right. Right. You That's cannot true. have peace right. within on, because bro. God is peace right. unless you have peace with God. Right. So until you have peace with God, I don't care what you got, you really don't have peace. You don't have peace. You really have turmoil on the inside. And how you know when somebody got turmoil? Any little thing happen, they going off. They just going off about any little thing. What these flip flops right here? What are these flip flops right here? They just going off about any little thing because they don't have peace of God on the inside of them. But the Bible also says anyone that lacks wisdom, let him ask. Because God will give you the wisdom that you seek. So if you know that you feel this turmoil, you know you're not feeling peace, then you want to ask God for that peace. And he will give it to you. So it comes from having a relationship with him. And having that relationship with God is the shoes of peace to help you be armed. Amen? Because when you lose your head, you're really going over to Satan's side. When you're not walking in composure, you're really going over the same side. Wow. So to have the shoes of peace, we want to walk in love. We want to walk in what the fruit of the Spirit says. In peace, in kindness, in long suffering, in gentleness, and in self-control. That's all part of the peace. The character of Christ is the peace that we're seeking. Am I making sense? Are right. y'all learning something yes, today? Yes. Thank you, Lord. I was thinking about the community giveaway. It's this Saturday, right? Yeah. Woo! So, amen. Give it up for Jesus. So when we started the community giveaway, it started off as a, a yard sale. We used to be trying to raise money for the yeah. youth ministry. Yeah. And then once we got over here, we was like, they don't need to be buying nothing. We need to give them everything. Yeah. So when we came over here, we started making it a community giveaway. But the whole purpose for the community giveaway was to people to have an encounter yeah. with the truth yeah. and the living God. Yeah. That was the whole purpose of it. So the vehicle that we used was free hot dogs, free water, free clothes, free household stuff, and all the things that we collect all year was the vehicle that we were using so people could have an encounter with the truth and the living God. Amen? So in having that encounter with the true and living God, we have to understand that we need to be equipped because it says the preparation of the gospel. Are you prepared to introduce somebody to the true and living God? Are you prepared? Are you prepared? So I just wanted to give y'all a little nugget to prepare y'all for Saturday because it's my birthday and I'm not going to be here, okay? I'm going to the spa. I'm going to the spa. It's been nine years since Sister Nina break, okay? 
So when I was thinking about it, I said, I don't know who was here when Sister D came to that giveaway. Was anybody here, Sister D? D? It was like, that was what? So she came and she was in need of something. And we was giving away food. But she said she ain't need no food. She ain't had no peace. Her mom had just passed away. And she was in a very bad way. She didn't need no food. So they took her downstairs, Pastor Denise took her downstairs and somebody else, I want to say it was several people, took her downstairs and prayed with her. And prayed with her that the peace of God would overtake her and that she would not feel the turmoil, the, the grief, the anxiety, right. the mourning that she yeah. was feeling. To tell her to think about the memories of her mom when her mother was here and all the good times that they had. So she didn't need food at that time. She needed an encounter wow. with the truth wow. and living God yeah. at that time. So when we're here and we're giving away the food, whether it be every third Saturday at the food pantry, whether it be twice a year at the community giveaway, we need to be armed with the word of God so we can give people an encounter with the true and living God. Amen? So I, I came up with something. I heard it on Alex Trebek, and it was so simple. Y'all write it down so y'all can be prepared on Saturday, okay? It says, the simplest way to share the gospel, which is the good news, is A, B, C. Okay. A, you have to admit something. Admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you're a sinner in need of a savior. A, you have to admit something. B, you have to believe something. You have to believe that Jesus died for your sins, that he took your place, and that he paid the price. You have to believe that Jesus is exactly who he says he is, and he can do everything that he said he could do. Amen? And see, you have to come. Because there's an open invitation for us to come and have a relationship with our maker and our creator. We have to come and cultivate that relationship with Jesus. And then the last one is then we have to go. We have to go and minister the gospel, the good news. But a lot of us are stuck between see and go. We stuck right there. Because how can we deliver a message that we ourselves don't understand? So the preparation of the gospel is to be prepared with the word of God and prepared with the understanding of what you believe, why you believe it, how you believe it, and how you can pass it along to somebody else. So you need to be prepared with that. I'm a Christian. Well, what makes you a Christian? Wow. If it's a jump over witness knock on your door and get to asking you all the questions, can you answer them? Wow. Because they're going to ask you a lot of questions. Okay. <laughs> So we have to be prepared. That's the preparation for the gospel of the peace. Amen? So if Jesus, okay, then you go. You have to go with the message. How can we go with the message if we ourselves don't understand? So if you don't understand the message, that's what you need to get into the word so you can have an understanding. I agree. But if somebody needs Jesus, you don't give them the ABCs. What's A? A. B. B. And C. God. So those are A, B, C. So that's the simplest way that you can give somebody salvation. Amen. If not, get a trifold. Y'all know the um, new beginning trifold? In the back of the trifold, it got a prayer of salvation. Y'all can say, let's read this together. Let's read this together. Because that's what it's all about. It's all about getting more people on the kingdom of heaven. Getting more people on the Lord's side. That's what it's all about. All yeah. the other things we do, that's the bottom line. That's the foundation of everything yeah, yeah, that we yeah, do. Yeah. For people to have an encounter with the true and living God. And when we read the word, whenever anybody had an encounter, they was what? Change. So when you have an encounter with the true and living God, you can't stay the same. Right. You really, really can't. You got to be working hard to stay the same. You really do. Because of, if you're going to have quickening in your spirit. You're going to know every fiber of your being. going to be like, don't go there. But you're going to go anyway. You really do. And then once you get changed and it becomes a lifestyle, then there's less effort to it. Amen? It's you on automatic. You're on automatic pilot. Have you ever been going somewhere and your car just take you somewhere? Oh, I wasn't trying to go here. I wasn't even trying. I was trying to go somewhere else. But your car be on automatic pilot and just take you there. So you come at a point in your life, in your walk with Christ, when you just on automatic. Wow. 
You are the Bible. You don't need to go pick up your Bible. You don't need to go try to coach somebody through something. Wait a minute, where that scripture at? The scripture is in you. Right. He said, my word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So you want to hide the word of the Lord in your heart. And hiding it in your heart, the Holy Spirit will bring everything that you need back to remembrance. Everything. Let's go to John 7. 37 through 39. John 7, 37 through 39. So the Lord had already promised us that he was going to send us a helper, and that helper is the Holy Spirit. So once we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, it's not just taking, speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is just the evidence that the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of us because we have power. We have the power of the true and living God living on the inside of us. So that same Holy Spirit that's living on the inside of you yeah. is the same Holy Spirit that raised Lazarus from the dead. It's that same Holy Spirit who touched the woman with the issue of blood and she was made whole. It's that same Holy Spirit that shut the lion's mouth when Daniel was in the lion's den. It's the same Holy Spirit that didn't let Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come out of the fire spelling like it's the same Holy Spirit. It's the same Holy Spirit. So let's read that. What does the scripture say? John 7, 37 through 39. Ready? Read. On the last day, that great day of peace, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, Ephesians 3, 11. 
3, oh, Ephesians 6 and 11. So what does that say? They look at the right now. It's up? Okay. Let's read it together. What's verse number 11 say? So it told us to stand against the wiles of the devil. Get 13 ready. So when we're standing against the wiles of the devil, the wiles is the attacks right. of the devil. So remember I told about that. I talked about, he says, the fiery darts of the devil and all the different things that the enemy tries to throw at you, you'll be able to stand. You won't be wishy-washy when it comes to the attacks of the enemy. Amen? And then verse number 14, what does that say? 13, I'm sorry. Verse number 13, what does that say? So we talked about the evil day. The evil day is when Satan throws everything that he has wow. at you. It's like it's like wow. when you turn around, something happened again. As soon as you something else happened again. As soon as that something else happened, and you're able to stand in the peace because you shod your feet with the peace. When it talks about standing in those evil days, I think about Job. And in the Bible, it says that Job got the news that his house burned down. Then while this person was telling him that his house burned down, he comes somebody else saying that all your sons died. And then while he telling him all his sons that he come somebody else saying all your daughters died. And while he's saying all the daughters that he come, somebody else saying all your cattle got burnt up. So he was getting all of this bad news in one day. That's the evil day. That's when as soon as you answer the phone, you get some bad news. No sooner than you hang up, he got somebody knocking at your door with some more bad news. You want to be like Eveline, don't bring me no bad news. No bad news. No bad news. Nobody, nobody bring me no bad news. I know y'all, y'all there, y'all there. And verse number 14, verse number 14. <laughs> Ready, read. tries to come against you. Amen? This battle is that we have to stand on what we know is true. That's putting on the breast, I mean the, the belt of truth. So not what the world says is true, what the world God says is true. Because the world is on something totally different. It's on something. We have to stand when things are not going the way that we think they should be. We have to stand when the word of God is not popular. We have to stand when things are not lining up the way that we feel like they should be lining up. We have to stand and know that the truth of God is the truth of God is the truth of God. And we have to be watchful and firm when it comes to standing. Because now there's a lot of things that are contrary to the word of God and a lot of people won't even preach it. They won't even mention it because they don't want to step on nobody's toes and they don't want to be politically incorrect. But I don't care what you say. Human, human sexuality, God created a man and a woman for marriage. Amen. Human sexuality, gender identity, God knew exactly who he created you to be. And he was not confused. Amen. He was not confused. Human trafficking, God does not, he frowns on that. That's nothing that he, child pornography, all of it is wrong. I don't care how many laws they pass. I don't care how often they say it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. But it's sin just like everything else is a sin. So a sin is a sin. Ain't no big sin or no little sin. It's all sin. So when it comes to that gender identity, gender fluid, it's a new name every freaking day. What? I'm gender fluid. I'm gender liquid. I'm gender this. I'm gender that. Huh? Yeah. Right. Right. 
the beauty industry, I've been around people that are gay ever since I've been doing hair since I was 18. Years old. That industry attracts yeah. that lifestyle. Yeah. So I love my brothers and my sisters. Now I'm more sisters coming out than brothers, but I love them all that's gay. But the word of God frowns on that. It's still not the best. So when I was back there, you know, I'm always teaching the kids and I'm trying to make it simple so that they can understand it. So we had a whole big conversation about gender identity, gender fluid, transgender, this gender, that. They were breaking it down to me. I said, how y'all know this? They teach them in school. They teach them in school, but they can't pray. They teach them in school. But they want to take in God, we trust off of a dollar bill. They teach them in school. So while they're teaching them that in school, and we having a conversation about it, they was like, Lady T, so what's that mean? So what's up with that? I was like, okay, there's the perfect will of God, there's the acceptable will of God, and there's totally being out of the will of God. So if I have a baby out of wedlock, I'm out of the will of God. Okay, because that's not his best for me. That's what the scriptures say. Okay, if I am in a homosexual reality, I mean relationship, I am out of the will of God. I'm out of the will of God. So that's the simplest way to put it. In that lifestyle, you're out of the will of God. It's just that simple. And if you go to Romans, it breaks it all the way down. It says having lust for the same sex is not God's best. It's not his best. So it's a sin just like lying, just like cheating, just like stealing. It's all a sin. It's all a sin. So even when they made same-sex marriages legal in the state of Ohio, we went to a pastor's conference. So when we, when we went to the pastor's conference, they told us that we had to put it in our bylaws that we did not allow same sex or homosexual or transgender or whatever to be in a leadership position in the church. They said because they were going around suing a lot of churches for different things. Do y'all remember when they sued that lady about a cake? She didn't want to make a cake for them. Go to another bakery! Go to another bakery! So when they sued her, it's like, okay, it's like they mobilizing together in unity trying to come against the church. But if you have it in your bylaws, then they can't do nothing about it. But it's a caveat, it's a caveat, it's a caveat. So if I have it in my bylaws that I don't allow same sex or gender, that's all immorality. It falls under the umbrella. So if I don't allow somebody that's gay, I can't allow somebody that's shacking. I can't allow somebody that I know that's sleeping around. I can't allow somebody that's cheating on somebody else cheating. It's all under immorality, sexual immorality. It's no different. It's no different. So when all of that went down, it was like, you know, so everybody's like, we just gonna, we just not gonna talk about it in the church. No, we gonna talk about it in the church. We gonna talk about it. So just knowing and understand, that's not God's best for you. That's confusion, just like you're confused on anything else. Right. So we pray that you get unconfused. We pray that you can walk away from that sin, just like you can walk away from any other sin. Amen? So we love you. You still our brothers and sisters, but we have to go by what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says that that's abomination to the Word of God. So we can't tiptoe around it. We can't tip, we gotta confront it. Because it's happening. Do y'all know every single show on TV gotta have somebody? And they just throw it in there like it don't even, don't even go together. He was watching some show, Blue Bloods or something, and the guy was married and everything, all of a sudden they go hang up with a relationship. We was like, ha, ah, we just stop watching it. We just don't even feed ourselves that stuff in our spirit. And it's like I'm turning into that crazy church lady. <laughs> Crazy church lady. I'm attached to the crazy church lady. 
control of it. I'm taking authority of it. Amen. I come in and I command the atmosphere. It's going to line up and be what God said it's going to be. Amen. We're not speaking no death and destruction. We're not coming up in here with no gloom and doom. We're not talking about no woe is me. We're coming in here saying, this is the day that the Lord has been. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. If you're going to be here, don't complain. If you're going to be here, don't complain. They don't come to me with that stuff at work. You know so-and-so did this and so-and-so did this. And I look at them and they be like, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. That's right, drink the Kool-Aid. Long as you work here, drink the Kool-Aid. If you don't want to drink the Kool-Aid, leave. It's just that simple. You're not going to come to be dumping garbage in me, and I'm not going to be hearing that all day, complaining about all kinds of stuff. If you can change it, change it. If you can't change it, leave. Bye-bye. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Okay, I want y'all to repeat after me. I'm still, I'm still on stability, stability. I don't know how, how all that stuff came in. So now I gotta do this real quick to get y'all on three of Okay, say God's word. God's word. Does God's work? Does God's work? By God's spirit. By God's spirit. Say it again, God's word. God's word. Does God's work? Does God's work? By God's spirit. By God's spirit. So the gospel, the message of the gospel of peace is God's word. Doing God's work by God's spirit. Amen. I don't have to explain nothing. I just got to say what the Holy Spirit told me to say, right. and I'm done. Then it's up to the Holy Spirit to do the work. Yeah. I don't have to give you a prophecy and then pass through the prophecy. Right. It's up to you to go get the instructions on what the Word of God told you to do. I'm just the messenger. I'm just telling you what he said. Amen? So in knowing that the gospel of peace is the message of God for those who trust him. Amen? So the stability. We understand stability. So next is mobility, the quality of state of being mobile. So the mobility means that as a Christian soldier, we should be telling the good news everywhere, everywhere. we go. Everywhere we go. And like I said, your um, lifestyle is telling the good news, whether you know it or not. So when you come in there with a happy continence, that's telling the good news of joy. If I come in there with gloom and doom, I'm not telling the good news. So in having that continence, I need to tell the good news and bring peace with it. So when we're bringing in the peace, I was listening to something and it gave a scenario. It said it was a lady in the grocery store and she was about to pay for her food and she was real anxious and nervous and it seemed like she was having a nervous day, breakdown. So if I had the gospel of the shoes of peace, I could go minister to her and help her and calm her down. But if I'm not prepared, I can't come. She having a nerve like that. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. Oh my God. Um, this is New Beginnings Ministries car. We have service at 1045 on Sunday. Is that going to help her? No. no! She having a nervous breakdown right now! No. She needs your assistance right now! You got to have on your shoes of peace. So if you had your flip-flops on and you didn't have them on at that time, you would be a missing opportunity to minister to somebody to help them. Amen? So the gospel of peace has to be mobile. It ain't just in these four walls. This is where we come and get equipped. This is where we come and get dressed for battle. Then once we get dressed, we got to go out into the world and do what it is that God has told us to do. Amen? We got to go out into the world and lift up our blood, stay battle for Jesus. We got to go out into the world and say that we are in God's army and we are here to change the atmosphere. We are here to take control. We are here to take over. Amen? So we got to have the mobility in our shoes of peace. And then last but not least, we have to have adaptability. Adaptability. The quality of being able to adapt to new conditions. Being flexible, versatile, compliant, and adjustable. Adaptability. The quality of being able to adjust to new conditions. So when God has called us, he wants us to be flexible. So we can't be so sturdy that we have to do everything the same way all the time. 
Have y'all ever visited a church that they be on such a time schedule that if the Holy Spirit came and was knocking at the door, they're like, uh-uh, we on a time schedule. It's time for the announcements. It's time for the offering. But God want to do something. God want to move. God want to set somebody free. God want to deliver somebody. But we on a time schedule. So when it comes to God, we have to be flexible. We have to have adaptability. One of the books that we go over in our discipleship is Experiencing God. So it's a book called The Experiencing God, and it's amazing. So if you haven't got there, it's like the second book in your discipleship. But one of the things that it says in the book, it says whenever we see God at work, we need to join him. Yeah. Whenever we see God at work, we need to stop what we're doing and join God while he's at work. An example of that, you can be somewhere and have somewhere else to be, and somebody has a need, and you stop and you minister to that somebody who has a need. It's 1230. I got to be somewhere at 1 o'clock. But you have a need. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to minister to you. As I'm ministering, it's 1245. It's 12.55, it's 1 o'clock. I have missed what I was supposed to do. But when you are at work with God, that 11 o'clock appointment, they already canceled. They are already rescheduled for later on that day or the next day. So when you are being led by the Holy Spirit, he already worked everything out. We just have to be yielding vessels to be used by him. And when you are yielding vessels and you're being used by the Holy Spirit, he'll work every single thing out. I mean, everything. It's just mind-blowing how he works it out. I mean, when you're just stepping out on faith and knowing, I'm going to be in an in, in encounter with God. I am going to be at work. I'm going to let him work through me. I'm looking for an opportunity to be a blessing. I'm looking for an opportunity to, for God to use me in any way that see, he sees fit. And when you're looking for that opportunity, right. it always okay. presents itself. It always presents itself. So the adaptability of the gospel of the shoes of peace is being a yielding vessel unto God to be used any way that he sees fit. So in our minds, we can't understand all the ways that God wants to use us. We just have to be available and ready to be used of God. Amen? Amen. So I had broke down here sleeping ready to roll. Apostle and I was in the car, my time almost up. Apostle and I was in the car and I told him about sleeping ready to roll. He was like, what's that? He was like, I ain't never heard of that. Angel, you gonna talk about it. I said, sleeping ready to roll was like saying we had to be somewhere when we was younger, we had to be somewhere real early in the morning. We would take our shower that night. See, people know what I'm talking about. We would take our shower that night and get dressed and get in the bed. So we sleeping ready to roll. So when we get up, you just got to put on your shoes and go ahead on what you need to do. So he was like, boy, people do that? I'm like, yeah. So then me and Pastor Asian was talking, and she said, yeah, when I used to be in this workout class, the workout instructor told us to sleep ready to roll. Have on your workout clothes so at 530 you can get up, leave out the house, and go work out. You don't have to worry about that. She was like, sleeping ready to roll? He was like, I ain't never heard of that. I said, when I want to have my surgery, I was sleeping ready to roll. He was like, I said, I took my shower that night. They had all this um, goop stuff that you had to wipe on you, sanitizing stuff for surgery. He wiped all that sanitizer. I went to bed. At 3 o'clock in the morning, we got up. I already was ready to roll. So when it comes to the things of God, hallelujah, you need to be sleeping ready to roll. You need to be sleeping ready to roll. Because you don't know when the opportunity is going to come. You don't know when the opportunity is going to present itself. So are you Ready to run? Yes! Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 All right. That's all right. It's a whole lot of things that y'all know that I don't know that I know that y'all don't know. Right? We all come from different places, different places, different experiences. Amen. Okay? So I ain't mad at you knowing how to steam up the house. 
with some water. Don't be mad at me, because I know how to be ready to run. Don't be mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. We come together, amen? Iron sharpening iron. Let's read our last, last scripture. Jesus. Yeah. 